Hello, I'm Pastor Joe Turnblum. I'll be your host for Faith is a Victory today. We're coming live from Ralph Christian Center, located in Evansville, Indiana, at 940 St. Michael's Boulevard. We're glad to be with you today, and we're hopingly that, that we will bring you some word that won't tickle your ears, but will give you insight and understanding of what's going on in the area of what we call Christianity today. Some of it's uh, seemingly very Christian, some of it seems to be getting off course, but you know, we're going to share some things from the Word of God. You know, the Word of God, when you see something going on, hear something, this, that, and the other, the Word of God is a good thing to measure it by. The Word of God is truth. The Word of God is something God sent forth to us that we can measure our lifestyle even. So therefore, there's a lot of things happening in our world today that are not biblically sound in the doctrine of God. However, a lot of people are enjoying themselves to this and they're moving with it. Is this good? Most decidedly not. Let's pray and let's get started. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for this another day that you've given us to rejoice and be glad in. We thank you, Heavenly Father, the Lord God, at your will and your good pleasure that we all prosper and be in health even as our souls prosper. If perchance this day, Lord, I may have sinned on any wise against you or anyone, I ask you to forgive me. And perchance anyone has sinned against me, I ask forgiveness of them in Jesus' name. Father God, I thank you, your spirit is upon me because you've anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. You've sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, the opening of the prison of those that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, day of vengeance of my God, and to comfort all that mourn, to appoint in those who mourn in Zion, to give unto them beautiful ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, garment of praise, for the spirit of heaviness, that your people, Lord, might be called trees of righteousness. You're planning that you might be glorified. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that your word should go forth today on ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. That, Lord, has opened my mouth wide to be you that fills it. Not my ideas, thoughts, and opinions, but your word that goes forth, not return to you, boy, and accomplishing that which you please, and yes, prospering in the thing whereto you sent it. Thank you, Father, for this another opportunity to share the good news to those that are out there on TV land. Lord, and I thank you, Father God, as it goes forth, it's done to your glory in Jesus' name. And all the agreement said, Amen. Well, let's let the journey begin here. We're going to talk about uh, wolves and sheep's clothing. Wow, wolves and sheep's clothing. Well, you know, the Bible speaks of this. Jesus spoke of this. Wolves and sheep's clothing. What is a wolf in a sheep's clothing? Well, that's just what it is, you know. You remember the story of Little Red Riding Hood? Well, sure you do. Everybody's heard about Little Red Riding Hood. Well, the big bad wolf, he got into Grandma's uh, house, didn't he? And he was there to devour Little Red Riding Hood. But Little Red Riding Hood, being smarter than the big bad wolf, escaped the big bad wolf. Well, you know, there's a way for you and I as Christians today to escape the wolves in sheep's clothing. That's to become knowledgeable of the Word of God to increase our knowledge of the Word of God by studying in the realm or reading in the realm of the Word of God. 2 Timothy 2.15 tells you and I, study assure yourself proved unto God that we can be workmen that need not to be ashamed who can rightly divide the Word of Truth. This Word is the Word of Truth. To rightly divide it, we have to spend time in it. You and I are conformed to the realm of the knowledge of the things about us in the world. But this day and age, there's so many things coming at us from so many directions. New Age movement, et cetera, and so on, the curious cults that are out there. Many people have entertained these kind of situations unawares because they did not have the understanding of the discernment by the Word of God. Too many times it's easy to be seduced. You know, you always heard, have you ever heard the expression, I have many times, uh, when it comes to insurance policies, the bold print giveth, but the fine print taketh away. So many, many times, maybe we have thought we had a certain coverage, that when it comes time that we need something from that coverage to help us in our time of need, we find out it's not there. If you read a little farther than the fine print, oh, this, this, and this, it's just not covered. Now, I'm not putting insurance companies down, so please, don't some of you out there that are insurance people say, well, that rascal. No, I don't mean it that way. Uh, but many times there's a clause, a clause that says, sorry about that, but that's not what it really meant. Well, that's why we use lawyers sometimes in it. They're supposed to know the law. 
But it's according to which lawyer knows what side of the law, sometimes how it comes out. And I'm not putting lawyers down. But you know, when you have a client and you're a lawyer, you are representing a client. So therefore, you represent him to the letter of the law, supposedly to the letter of the law. You may have a client that's guilty of something, but you're still representing them in line with the letter of the law. So, you know, I wouldn't want to be a lawyer. I really wouldn't want to even be a doctor. I wouldn't want to be a school teacher because there are many things now and the constraints that governmental situations and various set of things have put on the teachers that it's hard for them to ever teach anything in a context it needs to be taught. Reading, writing, and arithmetic is probably one of those things that somebody says is going to be a thing of the past. Well, I don't really think you can get out of reading. I don't think you can get out of writing. I don't think you're going to get out of arithmetic because numbers are part of what our society is made up of. There's 66 books in this Bible. Those two numbers, 6 and 6, are very important to you and I. 39 books of the Old Testament, 27 in the New. You add that together, and like 2 plus 2 make 4, well, 39 and 27 make 66. But, however, there's another 6 found in the Bible. It's a 666, and it's got a pertinent involvement in the world as we know the world is today and in the realm of things to come. You know, too many times we don't keep up with the biblical times. If we would go back and we begin to read in our Bible, we'd find out that things that are happening today was mentioned way back here. They are spiritually discerned though. But you know, a Christian has been given, been given the spirit of discernment. He has been given this because God, when you get saved, has given unto you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him that the eyes of your understanding can be enlightened and you and I can know the hope of our calling as a Christian and the riches of our glory and our inheritance as saints of God. I mean, you may look at yourself as a Christian and say, I'm just, uh, just an old, low down, dirty old sinner. Well, I tell you what, I was a sinner, but by grace am I saved through faith. So I'm not a sinner. Can I still sin after I became, quote unquote, a saint of God? Most decidedly, yes. I mean, I'm here to tell you, on this side of heaven, okay, I can make all kinds of mistakes. But the day that I leave this fleshly body and go to heaven, I move into the realm of the perfect realm. But God wanted this realm down here to be perfect. He wanted us to work to break the conformity of the things in the world off of our mind and get ourselves transformed by renewing our minds with His Word. God's Word that is quick, powerful, and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul of the spirit, the joints and the marrow, is able to give us a realm of discerning and the realm of right and wrong that we can know when something or someone is trying to lead us astray. However, unless you are quickened by the Word of God and you keep yourself sp spiritually tuned up through study, prayer, etc., you will become dull of hearing. And that dull of hearing means things will get by you and begin to cause you to drift. There are wolves in sheep's clothing out there. Yes, there are. There's a lot of quote unquote what we call winds of doctrine floating around out there right now. Winds of doctrine, what's a wind of doctrine? Well, you know, we started out in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God. And along the way, we've got caught up in this and caught up with that. And in the book of Acts, we had a church. We had one quote unquote denomination. It was called Christian. What do we have today? Many doctrines, people going many ways, calling this the doctrine. But yet this, this is the doctrine. God's word always will be the doctrine. The Bible tells us in Romans 3 and 4, let God be true, every man a liar. I'm here to tell you, God is true. Man will lie to you and sometimes unconsciously because his opinion gets in the realm of God's opinion. God's opinion is always first and foremost. But mankind has decided, well, I think our society in the way we are today, we need to do away with this, we need to do away with that. Well, the Bible may have said that man ought to marry one woman, <laughs> have one mate forever. 
But it doesn't work that way today. The thing of it is, for by grace are we saved through faith. So when we cease to be able to follow the pattern God said, we can have forgiveness. The thing of it is, do we have forgiveness for veering off track with the word? Yes, we do. However, there's many people that have found themselves a man's doctrine and they're following after man and not after the man, Jesus Christ. Jesus said he's the way, he's the truth, he's the life. And no man comes to the Father except by him. He is the way, the way, the truth, and the life. When you say way, truth, and life, you're wrapping it up saying, this is the doctrine. Haven't got anything against denominations. We happen to be a non-denominational uh, group of people. Our body is non-denominational. We don't have a quote-unquote doctrinal tag except the doctrine of the Word of God. We try our level best to hold fast, thus saith the Lord. Are we fallible or could we be penetrated by something that's contrary to thus saith the Lord? We are people. We have emotion center and so on. I mean, some people tell me, they said, well, I just feel like I'm gonking along as a Christian. I mean, I need something new. <laughs> That's dangerous. If you want something new, get renewed in the Word of God. Get out of self and thinking you need something. What's wrong with your walk in the Lord? Look in the mirror. Hello? We are to offer ourselves up unto him. It's not how much God can give us. He's already paid a price. The price that he paid was his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. The thing you and I need to realize, we can have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus said it's the thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But he said, I have come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. More abundant life is not about stuff and things mentioned in John 10.10. 10. It's about a realm of the abundance of the spiritual aspect of God working in our lives. God wants to be first and foremost and to put no other gods before him. People today have a tendency to follow after man. That's how we got into so many doctrines. This person said, well, the way I interpret that and the way I interpret that or the way I interpret that. And the first thing you know, we got three interpretations. We have an extrapolation of what this one wants to believe, that one wants to believe, and what another one wants to believe. And the first thing you know, we had three doctrines. And man starts that doctrine. People begin to associate and go to this, this, and this. Now we are all over the map out there. There's only one doctrine, as thus saith the Lord. Now, where are these wolves in sheep's clothing? Let me, let me read something to you from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. I'm going to start with verse 6, where it says, One God, <clears throat> I like this, One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Every one of us are made up of the substance of one thing. That's the spiritual aspect of God. God is a spirit. The Bible tells us, John 4, 4, They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. What is spirit and in truth? The word of God is spirit and it's life. John 6, 63, Jesus said, The spirit quickeneth. He says, The flesh profiteth nothing, but he said, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. This word of God that I just read for you is spirit and it's life. And it says, One God and Father of all. It's saying, One God and Father of all who is above all. We can set ourselves up down here in some kind of level of anarchy or this, that, and the other. However, we do not ever set ourselves above God. Now, Jesus himself became equal with God. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God in the second chapter of Philippians. Okay, he thought it not robbery. But he made himself a no reputation. He even took upon himself the form of a man, was made in the likeness of man. But it's because of his death, his burial, and his resurrection, he was able to set up a realm that you and I could move back into the same relationship of oneness that he had with God. Well, God has created all. There's nothing created that was not created by the, the word of the Lord when he spoke. God is the word. God spoke. It became. If you read in uh, John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. There was not anything made that was not made of God. God made it all. God is the creator of all. There's nothing created that was not created of by through 
God. It's the way it is. Let's go to seventh verse here. We see how far we can get. But unto every one of us is what? Given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. To every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Now this is not just a wind of doctrine. This is not a sheep <laughs> that's hiding out in wolf's clothing. It's a wolf in sheep's clothing that would come to steal, kill, and destroy. But this is life being given to you to help you to live the life of a follower of Christ in the realm of the abundance he died that you might have. So when it says here, but unto every one of us is given grace. We have been given grace. The Bible says for by grace are you saved through faith, yet not of yourselves? It is a gift of God. Jesus brought grace to bear on your life and mine. When you read Philipp, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, he says, For by grace are you saved through faith, yet not of yourself? It's a gift of God. Or by grace are you saved through faith, yet not of yourselves? It's a gift of God. And it says, Not of works, lest any man should boast. Some theology, if you will, in some vein says we got to do good works. Good works are good, but you got to be saved by grace through faith before these good works make you accountable in the realm God wants you accountable. He said, be a doer of the word, not a hearer only in James 1.22. There's an important thing we need to come to understand. It's the grace that God has been applied to our lives through the blood of Jesus Christ. His mercy and his grace that is sufficient has been applied. The blood was applied for you and I at the doorpost of Calvary. Therefore, the death angel or death, hell, and the grave has to pass over us when we are one in Christ. Now, eighth verse says, Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that, now that he, listen to this, ascended, what is it but that he also descended first to the lower parts of the earth? They're saying, Jesus Christ descended before he ascended. Yes, he came from heaven. He was born of a virgin of Mary. Yes, he was. But through his death, his burial, and his resurrection, for him going to hell, he said, captivity free. Look a little further here. Said he descended, he that ascended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Go back to the Old Testament again to read. It talks about him coming to fulfill what God said would be fulfilled in Genesis 3.15. What did God say? He said to the devil, to the serpent, the one that beguiled Eve, he said, you know, I'm going to put hostility or, or enmity between your seed and the woman's seed. You're going to bruise his heel. But let me tell you something, buddy. He's going to bruise your head. Ouch. When Jesus went to Calvary, his heel was on the head of the devil. He put the devil under his feet right there at Calvary. And by doing so, he put you and I in the same control through the blood of Calvary. For by grace are we saved through faith. Now, next verse here says, <clears throat> And he gave some, I like this, some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Why did he do this? This came about for a purpose. We still have apostles, prophets. We still have pastors, teachers. We still have evangelists. They're in operation today. The realm of the prophet of the realm of the prophet we see throughout the old into the New Testament is somewhat different, but there is still an office of prophet. Take nothing away from that. But some people have become self-appointed prophets. I mean, it's like God. They can only hear God and nobody else can hear God. I'm here to tell you, you and I are equipped, equipped the moment we get saved to hear from God, to hear from God. Spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God became available and apparent to us. Once you are more apt to uh, receive uh, from God is when you get more apt to spend time in the Word of God. God's Word is imperative to grow in the things of God. So he said, what did he do this? He said, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. For the edifying of the body of Christ. 
these of the fivefold ministry were purposed to help to grow all Christians in the realm of the unity in the body of Christ. The thing of it is, some begin to have great success in certain ministries and they begin to get elevated in themselves. It's easy for an individual to get off track. We have to stay tuned in to God, tuned in to God to not get off track. It's easy for the devil to slip in and seduce someone into thinking hello this and thinking hello that until they get off. Let's look at the next verse. It said, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God and to a perfect or perfected or complete man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. To be more like Jesus is an important thing. To be more like Jesus. Strive to be more like Jesus. Jesus, not this pastor, not this evangelist, not this apostle, prophet, not this teacher, to be more like Jesus. Jesus is the true apostle. He's the true prophet. He's the true teacher. He's the true pastor. He's the true evangelist. Jesus is what we need to imitate. We need to imitate Jesus as spoken of in Ephesians 5. And this next verse says, to come in the fullness of Christ or seek to be come in the fullness of Christ, like Christ, so that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried away with every wind of doctrine by the slight of man and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. There are those who would deceive the Christian body. Why is this? Because Satan has getting a hold on certain and sundry ones that God has chose or called over time, but now they're beginning to drift. Why do they drift? New age, as it came on stream and growed and growed and growed throughout our nation around the world, new age has infiltrated. New age has caused people to fall away from walking a straight line with God and begin to weave. You can't ride a fence in God. He says, so then because you're lukewarm near the cold and hot, he says, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Well, if you follow the wolf that is in sheep's clothing, the first thing you know, you're going to fall in the ditch like the ox would fall in the ditch. We've got to be spiritually in tune with him to be not led away by every wind of doctrine. Many doctrines, many doctrines out there. I mean, there are many moves, uh, whether it be in Islam or this, that, and the other, of trying to move or seduce Christians over into that realm. That realm doesn't lead through Jesus Christ. That realm has nothing to do with leading through Jesus Christ. There's only one way to Jesus, through him. Because he said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. You know, wolves in sheep's clothing are something we need to be able to discern. They're like a seducing spirit. They, they just are out there and they're moving about seeking who may made a bar. What does the word say <laughs> over in 1 Peter 5, 8? said, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's out there seeking whom he may devour whom he may devour. If you're a baby Christian, uh, a still a childlike Christian, still fairly uh, carnal-minded, if you will, it's easier to be moved into any wind of doctrine that could be contrary of the doctrine and the Word of God. You need to be in a Bible-believing church that street, teaches straight in line with the Word of God. This Bible the Bible tells us, Jesus said it himself, and Peter re, re speaks it over in uh, 1 Peter 1. He says, you know, the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is a word which by the gospels preached unto you. You know, as we talk about this, I want to talk about it a little more in, in the next service, but you know, every wind of doctrine, there's a lot of doctrine doctrine, doctrine. We need the doctrine, the Word of God. It is that which will carry us through. It is that will keep us on course. You know, we, we can be seduced, but unless we stay on guard. It, it's, 
it's possible for any and all people to be led astray, if you will. God doesn't want us led astray. He wants us to be able to follow. Follow after the pattern of His Son, Jesus Christ. We'll go into more of this in the next session. So until then, remember, Jesus loves you, and we at Rafa Christian Center do too. God bless you.